the unreamed humeral nail, UHN. Section A shows the antigrade insertion, Section B the retrograde insertion, and Section C demonstrates the compression device. The antigrade insertion. Here the patient is placed in the supine position on a shoulder table where image intensifier control of the insertion point is easily possible in two planes. Simulating the supine position, we will fix the humerus model in the clamp with the dorsal surface downward. These instruments and implants are needed for the anti-grade insertion of the UHN. Additionally, we use the cannulated awl with T-handle and a 2.5 mm Kirschner wire. We insert the Kirschner wire into the cannulated awl and tighten the screw. For your own safety, be sure to hold the instrument correctly. The entry point must be in line with the medullary canal. This is usually midway between the margin of the articular cartilage and the medial aspect of the greater tuberosity. Using the cannulated awl, we insert the Kirschner wire into the medullary canal. Loosen the screw to release the Kirschner wire. And open the medullary cavity. Three nails of different diameters are available. The 6.7 mm nail, the 7.5 mm nail, and the 9.5 mm nail. For our purpose, we select the 7.5 mm UHN. We connect the insertion handle in the 7.5 mm UHN, the apex of the nail bend pointing away, with the connection screw. Be sure that the handle tongues engage the nail grooves. Thread the connecting screw into the nail and tighten with the 11 mm combination wrench. Insert the nail by hand. Rotatory movements facilitate the insertion. To check the depth of the nail, insert a 3.2 mm drill bit through the hole in the insertion handle. Bury the nail completely into the humeral head to avoid subsequent irritation of the shoulder structures, even when the arm is adducted. We demonstrate the oblique locking technique. First we insert the soft tissue protection sleeve with the trocar, and then replace the trocar by the 3.2 mm drill sleeve. The 3.2 mm calibrated drill bit allows direct reading of the required locking bolt length. Remove the drill sleeve and insert a 3.9 mm locking bolt through the protection sleeve. To remove the insertion handle, loosen the connecting screw using the combination wrench. To prevent bone ingrowth and to adjust the nail length after insertion, choose one of the end caps with 15, 10, 5, or 0 millimeter lengthening. Note that the final portion of the thread is scarified to prevent loosening. This will produce additional resistance as the end cap is screwed into the nail. Here, a zero millimeter end cap is inserted. Distal locking with standard freehand technique or with the radiolucent drive is not practiced in this exercise. 
To extract the nail, we use the slotted hammer, the inserter extractor, the connecting screw, and the coupling block for extraction. First, we remove the end cap. Now we screw the connecting screw and the coupling block into the proximal end of the UHN and tighten with the combination wrench. Finally, the inserter extractor is screwed onto the end of the connecting screw. First, remove the distal and proximal locking bolts. Then extract the nail using the slotted hammer. The retrograde insertion. Here the patient is placed in a prone position with the upper arm on a separate table or board. The elbow joint is flexed to an angle of 90 degrees. Simulating the prone position, we fix the humerus model in the clamp with the ventral surface downward. This is the additional instrumentation we need for the retrograde insertion of the UHN. Imagine the position of the olecranon. Even with a flexed elbow, drilling cannot be executed at an angle less than 30 degrees, since the insertion point must be extra-articular. The opening of the medullary canal is shown here using the alternative technique, starting with three holes forming a triangle. The holes are drilled at an angle of 30 degrees. We drill with the 3.2 millimeter drill bit and the corresponding drill sleeve. Be sure to drill only through the near cortex. Overdrill the holes with the 4.5 mm drill bit using the 4.5 mm drill sleeve. Once again, do not drill through the far cortex. The three holes can be united by specific burrs. We prefer the conical burr model. It is important to undercut the internal aspect of the near cortex and to cut a trough. This is done by decreasing the angle of the reamer until it's almost in line with the medullary canal. Insert the nail, assembled in the same manner as shown in the section for the anti-grade insertion. To check the depth of the nail, insert a 3.2 mm drill bit through the hole in the insertion handle. Distal locking is achieved with the standard locking technique, guided with the insertion handle. After removal of the insertion handle, we insert the end cap. Proximal locking using the standard freehand technique or with a radiolucent drive is not practiced in this exercise. Demonstration of the compression device. The compression device allows controlled compression of the two fragments in order to eliminate an existing fracture gap. Before inserting the UHN, the compression device has to be mounted onto the insertion handle, replacing the connecting screw used for standard nail insertion. The end of the compression device shows a scale indicating the number of millimeters of fracture gap can be compressed by tightening the compression connecting screw. Before inserting the nail, 
Tighten the screw with the combination wrench up to the zero millimeter mark. The maximal compression length is eight millimeters. The compression device may be used for anti-grade or retrograde insertion. In this exercise, the UHN is inserted from retrograde and the fracture gap is measured. First, lock proximally. Now insert a distal locking bolt through the compression locking hole. Be sure that both locking bolts have a good hold in the near and far cortex. Appropriate nail length is important to achieve this. Tighten the compression connecting screw and check the gap closure under the image intensifier. To hold the reduction, a second locking bolt has to be inserted through the static hole. The compression device is now removed and an end cap inserted into the end of the nail. 